Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the creation of my pain question and answer presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation, The Creation of My Pain. Recorded on the 4th of June, 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Mary has no idea why I asked her up. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how to make Mary nervous. <laughs> Not as nervous as last night. Yeah. I'm pretty how relaxed. How to make Mary nervous? Don't tell her what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> control, control, and in control. <laughs> now, the reason why I asked Mary up is I want to ask her a question for, for your sake, and that is, in the last eight years, have I ever, have you ever known of an emotion you've had before I knew what the emotion was? No. <laughs> Never. Mm. Mm. And in fact, we've had many discussions where I've wanted to say that my emotion is something else mm -hmm. or... I just have been completely insensitive to what you're saying, so not really disagreeing, but just like, pff, really? Cl sort of clueless. Clueless. Yep. Um, and then inevitably, whether it's in two days, two weeks or two years, I find that, yes, that emotion not only exists, it's like a whopping emotion yeah. inside of me. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Now, why am I saying that? Why, why do I ask you that question, do you think? Any idea? If we, if we come down to... <laughs> a, a lesson to us <laughs> um, to have more weight with what you're telling us, even if we may not initially see it ourselves. Yeah, have a bit more trust. Yeah. Have a bit more trust. You know, I'm used to communicating more emotionally, so have a bit more trust about that. It will help you a lot. If you can trust it earlier, it will help you more. Does that make sense? For many of you, you haven't trusted it for years and years. So, you know, for Mary, there's many times she hasn't trusted it for years, isn't it, darling? Yeah, it doesn't happen anymore, but no. it, it happened a lot in the beginning. Yeah. And that was a lot about me wanting to maintain a facade of myself to myself. Yeah. Uh, a, a belief about how I was and what I was really feeling that seemed preferable to the pain or the shame or whatever. So I it was felt. driven by the fear of the pain? Yes. More than anything else? Yes. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> now, I raise that before we do a QA and a because many times, last time we did Q&As, you weren't listening to my answer. And to be honest with you, I don't see much point in sharing my answer when people are not listening to it. <laughs> And many of you don't listen because you just can't trust that what I'm saying to you is actually the point that you're raising. Many of you don't feel that. So I want to just uh, two more, a couple of more guidelines for you about Q and A's with with this engagement with me. First thing is I know what I know. Now, what that means is, I also know what I don't know. So when you hear me say, I don't know, it's because I don't. <laughs> and when you hear me say, it is this, it's because I know. Do you follow me? Now, you don't have to believe I know, that's up to you. But I will tell you when I don't know. And I'll also tell you when I have an opinion, but I don't know. Does that make sense? So when all of you guys have asked me about earth changes, I've always said to you, this is my opinion. But you've taken it as, this is what I know. But it's not. It's only my opinion. What I know, this, what I know, is... God's truth. Now, how do I know that? Because I'm telling you I can feel what God feels. 
about the matter. Now again, you don't have to believe me, but I can. And you, when you're in that same space, you will be able to do the same thing. It's not anything special that's given to one person and not to others. God gives it to every person who is in a specific condition. Does that make sense? So you will be able to know what you know once God is telling you God's truth and you can feel that. So in conversation with you, God often, through this emotional experience, tells me what the truth is immediately about what you're raising and what emotion it is. Now, with regard to issues that I have yet to deal with, it's much more difficult for me. So I've yet to, for example, fully address the issues associated with worth, personal worth, particularly when it comes to my role, my God-assigned role. And so what I know about those things is only my opinion because I've yet to address the issue of what I know on those facts. But th none of those things, well, those things very, very rarely, if ever, affect you because they are things related to my personal issues, related to God's you know, treatment of me specifically and the way God's set me as the messenger of truth, if you like. And you won't have to ever address those particular issues except by, at, at some point, hopefully one day in the future, trusting me a bit more than you do. But I'm not asking you to trust me without experimentation, am I? I'm asking you just to have an open attitude when it comes to my answers. Just like a child would have an open attitude and, a, and able then to assess it later. So instead of instantly dismissing, you would be far better off listening with, with an open mind and an open heart and assessing it later through experiment is what I'm suggesting to you. You don't have to trust without doing that. In fact, it's very... You should not trust without doing that. You should always work through your own assessment of things. But what I'm suggesting is it would be a lot easier in these Q&As if you at least hear what I've got to say without shutting it down before we even get started. Does that make sense? Yep. So I wanted to raise that with you because it's been a major problem with the Q&As in the past. So what we'd like to do now is get started on this Q&A about the creation of my pain and what would you like to ask? If we start with Lani at the back and then we come down to Rachel next. Yep, if you keep your hand up, Rani, so keep your hand up. So that, yep, that's it. He doesn't know you, so. Lani, <laughs> Lani, darling. Lani, sorry, Elaine, sorry. We, we call her Lainey, so. <laughs> Hi, AJ. Here Thank you for your, your guys' continued dedication. Um, with creating pain, doing nothing would be just as big a sin, would it not? I think you've mentioned that. Yep, yep so that's a question. Good. So, yes, the answer is yes, emphatically yes. In fact, the spirit world is currently in the hells full of people who, who chose to do nothing or chose to remain ignorant. Very, very damaging thing you can do to your life, very damaging thing you do to your will because choosing to remain ignorant is actually shutting down your will so you're not actually developing the willpower that exists inside of your soul. And it's so important to develop willpower. As, or it's not, not willpower but will. The power of your will is so strong and if it's if it's suppressed it will not motivate you to do anything at all and that's very very damaging condition it's a very damaged condition and it's very hard to correct as well so ignorance and doing nothing very bad for you yep. could i just ask on the end of that isolating ourselves retreating because due to the thoughts are what is the sin even if we isolate ourselves we're yeah, still good, good question elaine that's also very true if you if you go so what i see many of you doing is choosing you, you you're unsure whether something's a sin right so the for the majority of you you can't feel from god whether it's a sin or not you can you don't understand the law so you don't know whether it's a sin or not and so what you then choose to do is do nothing just in case you might sin not understanding that actually doing nothing is also a sin. 
So God doesn't give you the choice to do nothing, interestingly. Right? God, God always, like God's laws always motivate us to action. Now, there are times when I say do nothing, there are times when we make a decision to not act in a certain thing because it would be unloving to do so. That's different than doing nothing. That's you making a decision to not act, which is different to not acting out of fear. Right? <laughs> Or that would be a discernment as opposed to a scepticism? Correct. Yeah. Thank Correct. you. Yep. Good questions. Um, Rachel is next, so if you keep your hand up, Rachel. I think my question's along the same lines. Yep. How do you know if you're in an addiction, if you're not aware? Well, that's a question probably more to do with your facade. So what we might do is put that on to the next Q&A. Um, because that's more this stuff up here. What we're dealing with now in this particular Q&A is how this got created down here. So we're now, we now want to focus more on our false beliefs and our false definitions of love and the actual pain itself, whereas anything to do with our facade and addictions is really up here. Right? That being said, though, addictions are very easy to measure. And we want to talk about how to measure them when we talk about our facade. Does that make sense? So, so let's have the conversation about our facade more and then we'll be able to answer questions about our facade. Sure, thanks. Yep. If we go right up the back to Dharma and then um, if we come down to Monique and then Miranda after that. My question is what are some of the list of beliefs we can have that is under the God rejects me lie? Well, actually, Dharma, you would be able to answer that. That would be lovely. <laughs> so let's, let's, you, you help me answer that question that you just had. Okay. What are, what are sometimes the feelings you have with God? So w when you pray and you feel like you're not getting listened to, what do yeah. you feel then? Um, God's off busy doing something else more important. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, so God's busy. <laughs> Fair enough. Mm. But, but what do you feel about God being busy? It's really I'm... Oh, self-worth. ...not important. Yes. Isn't yes. it? Yes. So can you see what often we do is we attribute something to God when actually what we need to do is be more focused on what I'm feeling as a result of what we're attributing to God? Okay. Yeah, so oh, I'm not important, that's one of your feelings. Yes. Well, is there any others you can feel? If, so, you know, you're, you're suffering, you're having okay. a lot of pain and suffering, Yes. and you're praying that God, to, for God to fix something for you, and God doesn't. Um, one more is that I'm doing something wrong, I'm in sin, I'm being punished. It's a punishment. Okay, I'm being punished, yep. Now, sometimes that's a statement about God, isn't it? In other words, you're basically saying that God wants to punish you, isn't it? Yes. Oops, I'm being punished. But also sometimes there's a statement about you, isn't it, that you deserve being punished for something. Yes. yes. It just depends on what, what, what way you're feeling it. So one part of that statement is anger with God. Okay. And one part of that statement can be anger with yourself. The anger with God... Yeah, that God's punishing you for something that you didn't deserve. Oh, thank and, you. And yes. the other, feeling like you did deserve it, so you should get punished by God. Okay. And God doesn't punish anybody. So uh, yes. anyway, so these are certainly emotions, yeah, that you're feeling. I'll just rub that top one out to not get destroyed. Another but one is I haven't owned it. I haven't owned God's grace. Ah, uh, Yes. God's whatever, love, truth, whatever. Yep. Yes. Yep. That's a statement again, a little bit about God it could be, couldn't it? In that God wants me to earn it. In other words, that God's like a parent who says, you've got to earn that before I'll give you it. You've got to earn this before I give you it. Or it could be a statement about yourself, feeling like no matter what you do, you can't earn it. Yes. So can you see there could be statements yeah. about God on this end and statements about yourself as well. Okay. Certainly, all parts of pain. So you can see in each in each statement, there's pain 
directed at God's nature. Like, I'm not important means that God doesn't feel I'm important, right? Or it could be that I feel I'm not important enough. I'm being punished means that God punishes, doesn't it? Or it means that I deserve punishment. So you can see how the flavour of the emotion is could be one or the other, our, our feelings about God, or it could be our feelings about ourselves. Yep, which is all pain. Another one I'm feeling into now is that if I get an answer from God that is new and different than what my family believes, then they may project that I am superior. Who do you think you are? So how's this? God's setting me up. <laughs> for conflict. You are 100% correct. <laughs> Now, part of that is a statement about God, which is that God does that, which of course God does not do, but, but also part of it is a statement about myself in that in the, there's something I've done that deserves me to be in conflict with my family and God's trying to make my life difficult. God's okay, that's a big one. Yeah. So you can see again there's a flavour in both directions, you see. Yes. It's interesting how these comments... You, you can see there's flavours in terms of how I feel about God and then how I feel God feels about me. Yes. Mm. Which are all part of our relationship with God, obviously. Yep. I'm just feeling into one more, if I may, <coughs> that if I'm speaking to God and I have a desire that God may feel ashamed of me or disappointed by my desire, so I better... Pretend to hide. Can't yep, hide so anywhere. God is disappointed with me. Yes, or worse, ashamed. Yeah. I'm very afraid of that. Yeah. And it's a very Indian thing, isn't it? Family yes. shame. Yep. Yes. Yeah, family shame. So you can see, again, uh, it's a projection of God in a way, isn't it? It's a belief that God would ever be ashamed of one of his, in, like his, his creations are the pinnacle of his design. Why would he ever be ashamed of one? Right? But that's not we often think he is ashamed, so we're actually yes. attributing human emotions to God. Yes. So that we're sort of blaming God for having these emotions. Or we've also got beliefs about ourselves in our relationship with God that actually I, you know, I'm not a I don't do everything right and I don't do it yes. I, I sin sometimes and and then I feel like well he must be disappointed with me because that's what my parents were like yes they were disappointed so he must be so you've only listed a few there but you can see you can see how easy it is with you there yes <laughs> <laughs> well no I, you know you've got your celestial spirit friends with you and you've got god with you you can easily if you allow yourself to contemplate these things find find these emotions it's quite easy the reason why you don't do it alone is because you don't want to feel these emotions i agree I, as, as i see the list i, I agree yes yes okay. so the problem with our pain is the reason why we don't identify our pains is because we're not choosing to feel our pains and so identifying identifying pain will will expose the pain won't it yes, yes. so what do we try to do instead of that we try to suppress the pain push it away by not by thinking that we don't even know yes but you do know okay does that make sense? That's the point Thank I'm you. trying to make to you is you, you do you. know this pain exists in you. You've just listed four or five pains that exist in you, quite large pains. Yes. And you can see the relationship with every one of them be, with you and your family. Can yes. you see that? Yes. Yeah, big relationships, isn't there? Yes. Family not treating you important, punishing you for things that you're not confused about, not being able to earn their love, yeah. respect and so forth. S sometimes family set you up, you know, brothers, sisters in particular might do that with you. And this feeling of disappointment of parents, you know, that parents often project that their child, that they're not doing what the parent wants. And, and these are just a few of those emotions we attribute to God which stop us from having a relationship with God. And as I release this, then I will have... You'll have clarity. You'll realise that to God you are important, that God never punishes, that God doesn't want you to earn anything, that God doesn't ever set you up and that God is never disappointed with you, even when you choose to sin. God isn't even, even disappointed then. You know why? 
Because God gave you the free will to sin. God knows that when you choose to sin, you will just be unhappy. But God's not disappointed with you for choosing to sin. God says, wow, that beautiful creation of mine just made a choice. <laughs> Which is the exact choice that I, I felt at some point it would make. But the poor thing doesn't realise that choice is going to hurt. Thank you. Mm. So God doesn't treat us like our parents do. But we do believe God does. This is the source of a lot of our pain. It's the source of a lot of the reasons why we reject relationship with God before we even have one. Isn't it? Good question. Okay, anyone else? If we come down to... If we, oh, sorry, we were already at Monique. Sorry, Monique. Yep. It sort of relates. Um, when I need to act and I have false beliefs about love that I'm not aware of, how do I know what to do or, or act lovingly without creating more sin, pain, messes which seem to happen? <laughs> yeah. Well, we haven't discussed yet quite a number of things about actions and how to undo, uh, what, how to decide upon actions that are loving and not loving. So, so I think we could probably leave the question to later um, and maybe if you could just note it down for later and ask it again. But, but if I just say briefly now that there is a way to measure the reasons for your actions and you are choosing to not measure the reasons for your actions. And the reason why we do this frequently is because we're acting in this false beliefs and pain, believing the pain is true. We believe it's real. We believe it's the definition of truth. Do you follow? So, for example, a, a child who's brought up who's been treated badly will believe itself to have no worth. It believes that's true. It believes that's true from God's perspective. It believes it's true from other people's perspective that it has no worth. It believes the pain is true. The pain is telling it a message that it believes. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. And then you take actions based on that pain. You follow that? Mm -hmm. So in, in regard to your question with regard to uh, the you know do, doing things that are unloving without knowing, most of what we do is unloving without knowing. We've got to understand that that is the case and start to identify how that is the case. And most of us resist the how. Most of us resist identification of what is unloving. We're automatically in the false definition mm -hmm. and we're in agreement with it. And so therefore we act upon it instantly without assessment. So obviously a part of the deconstruction process of, our, of all this is going to be changing that somehow. And we'll talk about that in day three and four. Does that make sense? And we were down to Miranda next, weren't we? Yes. Um, about being blindsided. You know, it's um, what is, do we only feel blindsided when we ignore? The feeling people? of being blindsided is driven by fear, right? If that's what your point of your question is, because I don't really gather the point of your question. It's not really yet a question. <laughs> <laughs> like so the experience question? of like... Uh, like somebody does action and I agree and then suddenly I feel blindsided and I thought, ah, there was something behind it. Is that blindsided? Mm. I'm a bit confused about the question, Miranda, so I better just leave it. I okay. Think. Yeah, right. I think. I need to formulate yeah. it back. Yep. Um, if we go straight back. Um, Jalen, that's right. Sorry, Jalen. And on this side, Paul. <laughs> How will I know um, when I truly have a genuine relationship with God? Well, a genuine relationship with God is not actually possible unless you're choosing to feel pain. So for the majority of you, you're not going to know for some years yet. Because there's all this stuff that has to be deconstructed before you'll get down to feeling pain. 
Do you follow me? Yeah. And, and also, the genuine relationship with God doesn't begin from your pain. You have to be feeling it. Because to feel it, it releases a lot of your false beliefs and false definitions of love about God, which are preventing the relationship with God. What is required is the connection with your real self, your true self, your true nature. Now, we're going to be talking about that the last two days of these presentations. And, and that is the thing that where a relationship with God begins. But for most of us, we have this mountain which, from God's perspective, is really a molehill on top of our real self. So this whole construction of sin right the way through to denial is a construction we've made which is sitting on top of our real self, suppressing our real nature, suppressing our true self. And we can only have a relationship with God through our true self, through our real nature. So can you see that it's going to require a deconstruction process? Now, the only problem with that for the majority of us is we start deconstructing up here, which we, we naturally have to do. And then after we've been doing that for a year or two, we still don't have a relationship with God and we start getting disappointed. Right? And then we, let, then we don't do it. When we're disappointed, we have a tendency to no longer have faith. And then we don't do it. So faith becomes a key quality in our ability to continue the deconstruction process to the point where we can start feeling our pain and actually feel it really readily and willingly. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Once you get to that stage, then you can start having a real relationship with God because your real self starts poking its head out. At the moment, the majority of you, I said this to the last group, majority of you imagine there's a curtain there in front of me and you. And the majority of you with your real self are going like this. <laughs> Poking, you know, just having a glance at the world through your real self. And in fact, um, later on you'll learn some major things about your real self and how it fits into this diagram, which we, we would like to talk about a bit later. Does that make sense? So we, we'll focus on that on a bit more later. Thank you. Yep. And Paul. We're... Um, our emotion of feeling rejected by God um, comes from our, our family of origin or parents? Not necessarily, Paul. You've got to be careful here. You see, our parents did sin and society did sin, yes. But how much of our emotion of being rejected by God comes from our lack of personal desire to not develop faith? Or our lack of personal desire to not understand the truth because we don't want to feel emotions? How much of it really comes from our parents and how much of it comes from our choice is the question. Can you see that? So, so, for, so yes, I agree. This, here's our parents, right, mum and dad. They certainly had... Oops, mum and dad can't have two dresses unless they cross dresses. <laughs> <laughs> so here's mum and dad. You know, they're, they're our parents. Obviously, male and female got together to create us. And then, and then they, their emotions got imposed upon... Little Paul, you follow? Certainly that did happen. However, Paul made choices to accept that paradigm, even as an adult. A, a choice that's actually very illogical, but he chose to do it. Now, what, what's his motivation for choosing an illogical course of action? It's to deny, as you'll find later, his own pain. So how much of our choice is about the denial of our pain and how much of it is about the fact that we had a certain upbringing? See, this is a question you're really asking. And, and the re answer is that no, a lot of it's got to do with our choice to retain the pain that comes from our childhood. Our choice to deny it and suppress it and, and not feel it, even when we're an adult. Most of us are making active choices as adults to deny and suppress our pain. And as a result of that, how much of it can we say is our parents' sin and how much of it is our choice? Can you see there's a mixture? It's not just all blanket, all just our parents' sin. It's also our choice. And, and that's more than just our law of compensation. 
Well, uh, well, our choice is driven by our desire, as I'm talking about. Our choice is driven by our, sometimes our false beliefs, but also our desire to avoid pain at all costs. Remember, in the first group, we talked about the pain pleasure decision-making process. And the majority of us are only interested in making decisions based around pain and pleasure. That's it. And we do that as adults. So we can't just say that it's all our family's fault that we do that with God. We're doing it by choice. We're making decisions. We're making choices. We're using our will. We need to stop believing that everything is their fault and start seeing that actually, no, sure, they've created a, you could say, a uh, environment that supports our choice, but you don't have to accept it. Right? Personally, you don't have to accept it. But we do. We not only accept it, but we embrace it. And in the next talk, we'll talk more about why we embrace it. What's really going on that causes us to embrace these false things. It's very illogical, but we do it by choice. And we've got to look at the choices we're making as well as what happened with our parents and their sin. Mm. And that feeling that God rejects me is something to feel and connect with that that that's in, in myself now and needs to be grieved out. Yes, and as we pointed out in the first group as well, you've not yet had it, or most people have not yet had a relationship with God to know whether God's rejected them or not, right? And I, I've never personally experienced once a person has begun a relationship with God that they felt rejected by God ever, right? So that tells me that the feeling of rejection from by God is not by God. It's by somebody else that you have put in the place of God. And that obviously has to do with parents or family of origin. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, some of these are choices. Some of them are predispositions because of the false beliefs of our environment, our parents and society. But we're still making choices. We're, we're choosing to accept these false definitions. We're choosing to accept the false beliefs. We can't say we're not. Because the reality is we could sit down and be logical about it and, and actually go, hang on a sec, does this false belief make any sense to me? Does it make sense to you that the most powerful being in the universe, the most developed, the person who developed your own body, which is an intricate work of art, right? And that person wasn't capable of loving all of its children? Does it make sense to you? Logically. Of course it doesn't. It only makes sense to you if you start wanting to deny a whole heap of pain about it. It's the way to get away from the pain. So we're making choices to deny pain. Remember, in our first group, we're using our will to deny. We're using our will to suppress. And what are we using our will to suppress? It's the pain we're using our will to suppress. Does it make sense? Now, we'll talk about that in our next discussion because that's all about the facade, how the facade got created. This, well, at this stage, we see that the creation of my pain has actually not just been caused by the environment I've lived in and my parents have lived in, but it has been caused by my choices. My will has been exercised to retain the false beliefs of the, my environment. And why have I done that? It's quite simple, because I'm afraid of getting attacked by my environment. If you have a different opinion to your parents and you have a different opinion to everybody else in the world, what's going to happen to you? probably get attacked right you get stomped on is generally the case isn't it literally is get stomped on right that's what you're afraid of that's why that's that's why we make the choice to accept it's one of the primary reasons why we make the choice to accept all of this rather than accept that accept the pain rather than accepting pain we make a choice to accept all of this instead and the main reason why we do it is the the, the world we live in stomps on us when we have a belief that is different to the world's. And that's family. You know, like, I've done it plenty of times with my family, got stomped on. You've done it plenty of times with yours, got stomped on. That's what prevents you from, you know, making a different choice. So you start making a choice to avoid the pain because that is the way to prevent getting stomped on. Yeah. Obviously... But we still need to see that is a fear-based choice. And it's sad that the world is predisposed to stomping on people who are trying to make loving choices. That's sad. 
but it's not God's fault and it's certainly not yours either. Yeah. Good question, St. Paul. Um, where were we over here? Where were we with anybody? No. Felix, you. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> um, about this diagram here and its relation to the subject, the issue of pain. Yep. Um, I remember you saying that um, repentance and forgiveness is the. Um, yeah, cure. Uh, the repentance and forgiveness is the solution or cure for for all pain, right? Yes. And um, I look at that and I thought, well, isn't you has you got pain right at the bottom? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, isn't pain all now, along the top? Where does and repentance and forgiveness fit in? Isn't it repentance for sin and the forgiveness of others' sin? Yeah. So it's right down here, isn't it? Yeah, but. Yep. I th it makes sense to me that I thought that wouldn't I need to it makes like repent for having a facade repent for um, all the other choices in between there at the top of course and you so probably won't pre repent for the sin until you've done that yeah because your awareness is such that you believe that you didn't sin yeah <laughs> so all that stuff on top is sin and all that stuff on top is like a mini little repentance. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. when you actually said that, it kind of clicked, and yeah. I got. It and we'll talk yeah, about the okay. laws involved in that in our next group. Yeah. Yeah. But the reality is, we've created all of this, and there are things up here that we're going to have to repent for or forgive others for. Yeah. Just like there are things here we're going to repent for and forgive others for, and so forth, all the way down. But at this stage, what we want to do is under understand how it all got made. Yeah. So that we understand how it's all going to get destroyed. Yeah. Does okay. that make sense? Yep. And we made it collectively, mm -hmm. humans made it, but also we, through our own choices, made it. Yep. This construction was made by us. And God will not destroy anything that you made mm -hmm. unless you want to destroy it. So <laughs> this gets down to, again, the use of our will. So repentance and forgiveness is all of that stuff on top as well? Of course. Okay. No. It involves all of those things, yep. Yep, certainly. Yep. But you can see that once you repent, for the, once you understand the sin... That created all this, then and f and repent or forgive for the, that sin. Then obviously everything that gets created as a subsequent result will disappear quite naturally. Uh, uh. <laughs> Sorry, but don't you, uh, don't, don't you create sin up here? No, no. What I mean well, is, um, wouldn't I need to to repent for the stuff all on top before I got to the one at the bottom? Correct? Yes, because all that yeah. is yeah sin. Yeah, so I'd have to start there, repent for that, repent, repent, forgive, repent, repent, repent. But it all was driven by <laughs> some, it was all driven by some primary yeah. decisions okay. you've made, yep. primary sins, and that's what we need to get to eventually. What, okay. what are the primary things? And the primary sins are, f are frequently just quite simple. Mm. Mm. Like what? Well, for example, my false beliefs in God, where did they all come from? Um, my assumption that uh, my that God is like my parents. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So if I can get I rid of, yep. repent for my assumption that yep. God is the same as my parents, mm. then of course I will no longer believe God is like my parents. Do you yep. see? Yeah. So my parent. Then I will start saying, "Ah, oh, this feeling I have about my parents came from my parents, not from God," and yep. so forth. So you, you, you can then start entering a relationship with God through your real self because you're no longer projecting at God that God's like your parents. Yeah. And, and, and isn't it also true that God during this like, whole time is there just trying to have a relationship with us? And not, not only that, God's laws, all of God's laws are there to help us deconstruct it. So even while I'm in my facade and no bit of facade and um, stuff, if there's any opening for God to get in, he He's she already will. there, yeah. yeah. And thirdly, I noticed I was confused that you put the facade under the addictions. I thought the addiction might like I find that I'm in a facade to get my addiction met. Not the if other we way understand around. this diagram properly, this is my facade. <laughs> okay, but doesn't isn't my facade driven by my addictions? It no, it's, it's driven by a lot your lies. It's driven by your fear of the truth. We'll talk about that later because okay. we, we haven't covered that yep. yet, have oh we? Oh, yeah, sorry, wrong, wrong, yeah. So wrong we'll question. Yeah, so we'll talk about that sorry. later. Yep. If we uh, go to Graham and Ivana on this side. Um, 
Evol believes in rebellion against law as an expression of freedom. I don't think you covered that. I don't understand what that's about. Uh, many of you believe that to truly be free, you've got to rebel against law. You do this with society a lot. You know, like the speed limit's 80 k's and you want to go 90. And you feel this is because you're free. You're allowed to go 90, so you go 90. Does that make sense? So, so your desire to speed often comes from just from that one emotion of wanting to rebel against somebody trying to impose a limitation on you. You follow me? And because you believe some of these limitations are not valid. They don't have any worth. You follow? And so frequently, evil, a lack of love, wants to rebel. It has a desire to rebel. And, and you're talking about God's laws as well as man's laws? Yeah, well, naturally, if we have a desire to rebel against man's laws, it's highly likely we have a desire for the same, for the same motivation with God's laws because it will be driven by the same feeling in us. Like The feeling is someone's imposing a restriction. How dare they? <laughs> so I break the restriction, even if it's to my own detriment. That's what I do. That's what rebellion does. So this is different to what if if we feel like man's law is is goes against God's law. Very different because if man law man's law goes against God's law, it's only wise for us to accede to God's law, isn't it? Because man's law really in that place is is a is opposing God's law, and God's laws are the facts of the universe. So that's what I'd follow. Not, not man's law if man's laws are not supported by the facts of the universe. Yeah. Or they don't care. You know, There are some laws made by man like going 80 k's um, where there's, a, there's some love involved in it, but sometimes there's not. You know, you're going 80 k's in a zone where you feel that it's pretty dangerous to go 80 k's here. I'm allowed to go 80 k's, but if I was governed by God's laws, I'd slow down. Does that make sense? Yeah, but would, could it work the other way, where sometimes they it, impose a stupid speed limit where it's not necessary? Of course, yes. But but love would dictate there that I at least there's a number of reasons why love would dictate that I go the same speed as everybody else in that location, because me going a different speed may cause an accident in itself. So love would again say, well, it's just a law, but man's made it. Sure, it doesn't matter so much, but me going a different speed is going to actually cause some trouble with other people, potentially. So what I need to do is slow down and fit into the law. So again, my love would drive me to obey. Does that make sense? Yeah, good, great, thanks. Yeah. All right, now I'm just going to check my time. I should be finished by 12, 12 not 12.30, wrong thing, 1.40. I've got, I've got, I've got 10 minutes or so, yep, good day. Um, if we go to Lani, oh sorry, Ivana's next, sorry, but La Lani on this side. Thank you. Um, you mentioned before about uh, someone who is doing all these things that they believe are loving mm -hmm. and they're actually creating a whole lot of pain. Yes. So do, uh, with us learning, and I know for me it's intellectually, learning about God's um, way of love, like Am I creating more pain for myself because I'm learning about um, God's truth and God's way of love? Um, oh, hang on, sorry. Yeah, am I creating more pain for myself uh, doing things that I believe are loving while learning about divine truth than someone who's not learning about divine truth? So uh, in other words, you're basically saying, am I creating more pain for myself because I choose to no longer be ignorant than I was being ignorant. Oh, no, because I still do things that I believe, you know, I've still got beliefs. Yeah, no, that's still the case. But your question is more about ignorance, isn't it? Because um, yeah, the other people yeah. are ignorant of God's laws yeah. and you are choosing to not be ignorant of God's laws, is what you're saying. Oh, well, I still feel I'm quite, uh, like I haven't emotionally. Well, you have a desire, so. yeah. a growing desire to not be ignorant. Yeah. Isn't that not true? Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so you're saying there's a group of people who are completely ignorant about God's laws. Yeah. And you're not completely ignorant about God's laws. You're starting to see what God's laws are at an intellectual level. Yeah. But you still recognise there's things you do when you sin because you still don't yeah. understand. Yeah. 
still don't understand properly. Yep. Is your situation better or worse than a person who's desired ignorance? Well, when you explain it like that... What's the answer? Uh, that it's better because oh. I'm at least attempting to learn about or, and have a desire to. Of course. And what does but God's laws measure? Your feelings, you yes. said before. Yep. So the person who's wanting to stay ignorant, what feelings do they have? That they want to be ignorant. Yep. yep. And what feelings do you have? Uh, that I want to learn. Okay. Yep. So that not that better? From God's perspective, it's better, right? Yeah, I guess maybe I'm more concerned about the unloving choices that I've made. I understand what's driving the question, yes, the emotion that you're concerned about, the unloving choices. But you see, God, God is merciful with us. God knows that you're in a state of learning. You, you follow me? And, and so God knows there's things you don't know right now and that, and that God's going to have to help expose those particular things. God knows that. God's laws are already doing that. And also the law of compensation is already giving you where you've broken the law. So, so, so you can't get any worse by wanting to be better. Oh, no, I, I just know that I've made a lot of really bad decisions like since learning about divine truth. I like, agree, but if you examine the cause of these decisions... In those moments, it wasn't because you wanted to love that you made the decision. No, I know. Yeah. yeah. So, so it was because you didn't want to love. Yeah. So that was the main problem. Your definition of love was skewed or you didn't want to love at all in those moments. Yeah. So don't, don't blame like a, a, the, what, the subsequent result, the subsequent pain for you knowing more because it's not because you know more. It's because in that moment you chose to ignore what you knew. Yep. Do you see? I think so. Yeah. So, so be careful there. So when we ignore what we know, many of us do that, right? We know things and we still ignore them. We know it, we ignore it, we know it, we ignore it. Well, God's trying to address why we feel we should ignore it because God's, God's laws are trying to address the feeling. Still. Sorry, I'm just getting a bit confused now. That's all right. Yeah. You yep. will listen to this and yep. you'll understand what I've just said. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. It's all right. Once you get emotional, it's okay with me. I can still talk and you don't have to hear the answer anymore <laughs> yeah, because you'll hear it later when you listen yep. then, you know. Okay, yeah. thank you. Lani. Um, can you talk a little bit about how... Um, oh, sorry. You might have to stand, yeah. It's a bit hard for you there. Thank you. Um, about how steadfast you are in the face of denial when people deny your truth and or God's truth, how you remain steadfast. It's a good question, but can we ask it in the... In the facade section next, yep. because it really does apply to the facade. Yep. Yeah, here we're trying to focus on the pain, right? Yep. Okay, so if we come across... Yep, yep. thank you. Okay. Um, in the types of pain created, yep. will you explain how superiority is painful for the person feeling superior? Very good question. Yep. Many of you think superior, feeling superior is a good thing, right, to, for yourself. It's just a bad thing for others. <laughs> right? And remember, the, the goal is, God's truth is, what's going to make us happy is equal, us believing we're equal. So this is God's truth. We are all equal. And I'm, so, let's say I'm feeling superior, right? How is that bad for me? Well, what it does is it actually tells me internally that I am more important than you are. Now, as soon as I believe I am more important than you are, I will go ahead and make a whole lot of choices and decisions that are out of harmony with God's truth about being equal, which obviously will cause subsequent pain to my soul. I'll make a whole heap of choices. So, for example, people will start attacking me and I don't understand why. But it's because I treat them like they are inferior. And that as soon as they feel that, most people want to rebel against that. So they attack me. So a lot of the times we don't understand that actually God's laws are already in operation trying to correct the behaviour. So a person who believes themselves to be superior actually engages and actually attracts a lot of very negative behaviour towards them. Right? And that's been purposefully designed to correct the behaviour. If they remain in a position of superiority, they will choose to sacrifice others for themselves in all situations. Right? Now, if I give some examples of that. 
For many women who become pregnant, they believe their life is superior to the child's life and so they justify an abortion. Can you see that? That is a feeling that my feelings are more important than this unborn child's. That causes me to justify an abortion. I've just justified a murder because I felt I was superior. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So this is an indication of how damaged it can be. We can even murder in that place and fully justify it. And society go along with us as well, justifying it. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so it's a very damaging emotion and it causes much soul damage. So the area that it damages us is in our core. So if we look at our soul, our half of the soul, right? what's happening is when we have emotions, so there's our two bodies, our spirit, physical body, spirit body, when we have these emotions in our soul of superiority, we engage behaviour that actually justifies a whole heap of unloving acts and every unloving act has a feedback mechanism back into the soul of pain. So eventually the pain of this soul is going to increase, 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 increase until it gets so intense that it begins looking at its behaviour. Right. And it actually has more pain for a person who treats themselves as superior than it has to the persons they treat as inferior. Which is appropriate if you think about it. Because they're in that place would do more to harm others than a person who's inferior. A person who is inferior does less generally to harm others than a person who feels themselves to be superior. So they engage more sin by believing they are superior. And as a result of engaging the more sin, there is more and there is going to be more pain to feel. Mm -hmm. Now and in the future. Yep. And then that probably also affects them physically. It will definitely affect them physically later in their life on earth and then, and then on top of that affect them particularly when they pass. Later in their life on earth, often spirits, people who believe themselves to be superior are often attract some very dark spirits because those spirits can motivate that person to do a lot of unloving things without that person considering their actions. Can you see why? It's sort of like, it, yeah. if, if you believe you're superior, I could motivate you to harm another person more easily than if you believed yourself to be inferior to that person. All right, so spirits are more attracted to people I mean, wicked spirits, evil spirits are more attracted to people who believe themselves to be superior than they are to people who believe themselves to be inferior. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yep. So many, some of you in this audience have that problem. You're attracting spirits who, who are quite dark as a result of these feelings of superiority, particularly over your partner, but also over others. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, how much time do I have? I've got one more question. Let's come down to Julie. Sorry, I'll go on. Jesus, can you be superior and inferior depending on a situation? So if you're... Of course you can. So you just, yeah, you can do an action that's perpetrating superiority and then in another situation or male to female you can be... Correct. You see, in our childhood, there were many times when we were treated as superior and there was many times we were treated as inferior in different circumstances and situations. As a result of that, there are many times when a certain situation comes along, we automatically engage the feeling of superiority and then when another situation comes along that resembled a childhood inferiority situation, we automatically engage the feeling of inferiority and we can have... And quite frequently we do have 20 or 30 emotions relating to superiority and another 20 or 30 related to inferiority. Does that make sense? Yes. In God's case, God wants us to see everything as equal. So every inferiority is just as big a sin in some regards because it's a harmful to a self. Yeah. Superiority is harmful to others. But inferiority is also harmful to others because it encourages superiority it encourages abusive behavior towards oneself yes that's what i because sometimes when i'm feeling really feeling inferior mm -hmm. i will purposely go 
to a superiority feeling, which is then perpetrated by anger. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Quite frequently, it's that, that fascinating. You might be in a partnership and he says something and you feel inferior. Now to defend that feeling, which feels terrible, you want to make yourself feel better than he is. And then you get into him about, uh, what are you, yeah, you can't point that out to me because you do this and you do that and you do this. And now you're trying to be superior and now you're engaged in the sin of, of being superior, harming the other person in order to avoid inferiority Inferior. emotions. Yeah. yeah. Very complex uh, se series of emotions. It's interesting that both groups ask that same question in this session, yeah. Okay, well, we come to the conclusion of this particular presentation, the creation of my pain Q&A. Good questions, guys. Now, we'll have now a 30-minute break, so we come par at 10 past uh, 2. Is that right? Yeah, 10 past 2. And uh, we'll get started on the facade. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.